Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> One little prick from this, you know what happens? Yes. Your blood congeals, clogging your veins and your eyes rupture. I said yes! You know, it was at that point in the in the lockdown, I think we're after summer and we we're approaching the fall, I think it was like four months, five months in, and people were going a little stir crazy. There was almost a feeling of depression, like a worldwide depression in the air or something. Yeah. And uh read the script. Um, you know, you know, it was tied into to my friend here, and it just I, I was I was I laughed out loud like. By the time we got to the Bad Bunny scene, and I said, "That's that's 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 the salve we need right now. This is what I want to see," and uh, and so off we were off and running, and we 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 hit the ground pretty quick. We pretty did. Quickly. It was a sh it was a short prep, and you're right. Like we made it during the height of the pandemic, so it was kind of a cathartic for all of us. Like we got into that stage at Sony and we were just this crazy group of yeah. Yeah. actors together and we let everybody loose. Wait! <laughs> the dialogue's punchy, it reminds me of something like a Tarantino uh, with the punchy back and forth kind of dialogue and then also this, this elements of Korean drama, there's comical uh, moments. It's got like this huge mix of, of so many different elements. And, and what's fascinating about it is that it's, that was on the page, but then you add all these great actors involved and these brilliant visuals that David's bringing. And um, I kind of, I, I, I'm, a lot of the films that, a lot of, a lot of the projects that I normally do, I don't, really want to see it because I'm very critical of my own work and all that. But this one, I'm like, well, this is, I think, I, I really feel like this one could be something special, you know? I, I, I personally, that's how I feel. <laughs> What's really dope about this production is the way that we have really kind of like reinvented the wheel on how to film a movie because like we're back on the lots and like there's different train cars like i, I was said to somebody i was like it feels like we're back in like 1930 like how they used to do like we're, like everyone is moving this train and turning this train and there's a first class train and then there's a momomon train and then there's the economy train and then there's the train with all the bodies <laughs> you know so it's like it's really interesting how every day you walk on set it's a completely different environment oh my god woo david leach <laughs> That's about to be sick, man. Yeah, that's okay. Ooh! First, they filmed the the, the plate photography. Yeah, the plate it. photography. They filmed the journey from Tokyo to Kyoto, and we had these giant, giant the length of two, three train cars. Yeah. These giant video walls on both sides of the train that they could they could plug into any part of the journey in, in the background. So you would see that in the windows, and it really felt like. It felt like we weren't stagnant, like a boring soundstage, you know, where it's just kind of stifled and there's no air. And it really felt like we were moving to the point that some crew could not even, they, would, yeah. they got motion sickness. <laughs> and we're, sit, we're standing still. <laughs> it's pretty incredible being able to film on this set. The, the way they built the train and, and everything. I've actually been on a bullet train, uh, took the exact same path from Tokyo to Kyoto. And so it was kind of crazy when I first got this script because I was like, oh my God, I just did this. Like I just went here. Um, and so I have to say like this train is exactly the same as basically the one that I was on. And it's so cool to see all the details in the train and all the details and everything. We've got the awesome LED screens with the city lights going by. It is such a beautiful, intricate set for how small it is and how limited it is. It just blows my mind at the attention to detail. I am so fortunate and blessed to be able to be opposite Brian Tyree Henry. He is one of the most talented actors. I've enjoyed watching him in so many different projects in TV and in film. I admire his work, I admire him. Um, he's such a beautiful human being. I love him to bits. And, um, and I honestly couldn't have created Tangerine without the influence uh, and, and the bounce I get from Brian. How's that my foot? 
<laughs> I have something you're looking for. Really? Sorry, man. I remember Johannes Not a bit. I you, no. You shot me. I shoot a lot of people. Twice. I should have done a third. <laughs> <laughs> Living in the flashbacks was like a choice that I really wanted because I felt like we needed to escape from the train. You know, you get in a train movie and it's like two hours in a tube and like no matter how cool we make the train cars and we had fun environments in the train cars. I liked going out and seeing the story of the White Death or the Wolf's story and like spending two, three minutes there and then coming back to the train. So it was something creatively that I held on to and fought for to make it a little bit more of a wild ride and mm. an escape, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I think it just makes you feel like the journey is a lot, it's more colorful. It's not just that journey, it's a journey of fate. It's not just a journey on a train to Kyoto, it's like the journey of how all these people got here at this time. <laughs> I was so pleasantly pleased to see the design. Dave's got a cast of, of, of very talented um, um, stunt inventors. <laughs> and there's this language, you know, that kind of like, in my mind, paid tribute to Jackie Chan. We, had, we both have a mutual love for Jackie Chan. I feel like he's so underrated. He's a Buster Keaton of our time. And, uh, even though he is appreciated, but still yeah, not. Nice. He's like no. what he pulls off. The degree of difficulty is like extraordinary. Yeah. But it, there was this bit of humor designed into the into the fights, and um, it was um, I don't. I, all we had to do was learn it. You know, we didn't like these guys already had it packaged, put together. They had the language. They had the ideas. <laughs> I don't think you can do that without having characters that are um, relatable. Like you get these seven sociopaths on a train, and is and is <laughs> like as six and a half, six, <laughs> and is and is like um, it, that could get really dark and jaded really quick. And I think the the goal for me was always like, shit, how do I find the humanity in these characters? How do I make these moments real? How do you care about them enough? Because by act two, they're all cold, heartless killers. And we found a way to access everybody in a certain way. Like you look at Aaron and uh, Brian's relationship, they're brothers, right? And they play those, they play those brotherhood moments so genuine and real, you get the feels. I want people to go on the roller coaster that we created. Um, and if they find a little piece of philosophy in there, like, you know, you can't control your fate, but if you um, just, you know, flow with it and you find some acceptance and grace, like, Ladybug thinks he's found, and then maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tangerines are sophisticated. Oh, now you're calling a fruit sophisticated. The easiest fruit to cross hybridize with other fruit. They're adaptable. As they say in Spinal Tap, there's a fine line because, between clever and stupid. Fine line. I don't know, there's just a vibe, but there's an energy when you got other people and we're all laughing at the same thing, you know? It's infectious. Um, that's much more pleasurable then you, you can have on your own. So this one plays that way. This one really will thrive well in that, in that situation. Yeah, I mean, I've had the, I've been fortunate to screen it sort of in our final process a, a bunch and it's way, it's so satisfying to have that communal experience with the audience and like he, them laugh. I mean, good comedy, you see a stand-up comedian together, right? You see good comedy together, like laugh is inf infectious. And that's the way you, you want to see this with a, on the big screen with a, with a group of people. Hola, mi gente. Yo soy Benito Antonio Martinez Ocasio, conocido como Bad Bunny, y ahora también conocido como El Lobo. El Lobo es el personaje que interpreto en la nueva película Bullet Train, y está bien cabrón. El Lobo viene de la nada y forjó su destino para convertirse en uno de los asesinos más hábiles del mundo. Tiene una pasión casi letal. Y su misión es vengar el amor de su vida. Ven a verme en Bullet Train con mi personaje, el lobo, donde además peleo con Black Bear. Just me? Dude, I don't even know you. 